Hello students and welcome once again to our industrial electronics session. My name is Sito Bejane and in today's session we'll be doing Norton's theorem. If you can remember in our previous session we once did the exact same question that you see on your screen but we used different th theorems. We first used superpositions theorem and then we used Thevenin's theorem. So in this case we'll be using Thevenin's, I mean Norton's theorem. Our example comes from example 1.9 from the TVET first book by Macmillan and True Pen Publishers. Now, we will be looking at how to apply this Norton theorem in a circuit where you have two voltage supply. The trick here with Norton's theorem is that you are going to be applying both the previously learned theorems, that will be the superpositions theorem and the Thevenin's theorem. With the superpositions theorem, that will only assist you to be able to short circuit each voltage source so that we allow the other one to be supplying and then we read what's happening in that circuit. While Thevenin's theorem will only assist us to omit the load resistor and mark the terminals A and B. So let us get to it. The first thing that we must do when you have a circuit like this is to omit the load resistor. When you are omitting the load resistor, that means you are applying your Thevenin's theorem. Mark your points A and B. Now, Norton's theorem comes in and say, use an ammeter to short circuit the terminals. Now, we have to come back again to our Thevenin's theorem. When you do our Thevenin's theorem, you need to short circuit one voltage source at a time so that we can start our calculation. What is the first thing that we do? We are going to short circuit V2. When you short circuit V2, only V1 will be left supplying. Draw our circuit like this, taking our points A and B into consideration and also have that resistor there, which is R2, this is R1. And this is V1. We are also again going to be short circuiting V1 and we'll redraw our circuit like this. This will be our R2, that is 10 ohms. This is our R1, that is 6 ohms. This is our V2, which is 12 volts. We are going to name this one circuit A and name this one circuit B. Now, what is it that we are seeing here? When V1 is supplying, current will flow in the circuit. But current tends to only flow in the direction where there is lesser resistance. This means that only this side of the circuit is where current will be experienced. Automatically, the R2 resistor will not be receiving current. So it will be automatically cut out. Same applies with circuit B, when current is applied or when current is flowing through the circuit from the V2 supply, only this side of the circuit will be receiving current, therefore leaving R1 non-operational. So when it is in that case, it is simple and clear that only R1 for circuit A will receive the total current and only R2 for circuit B will be receiving the total current. Now we'll be using that to calculate our Norton current. First, we are going to calculate for circuit A, the value of I1, which is going to be V1 over R1. And this is 7 divided by 6. Remember, folks, your calculator is always important. Keep it handy so that it can assist you each time you make your practices. Do not only use your calculator when you are going to write an exam, but also calculate even the complex calculations, operation of your calculator. The answer here is 1.167 amps. 
We come back to circuit B, we are doing the same thing. We are going to calculate I2, which is V2 over R2. This is going to be 12 divided by 10, and we are going to get 1.2 amperes. Now, these are the two currents which are being supplied from the original circuit. This means that our noton current in this case will be given by I1 plus I2, which is 1.167 plus 1.2 amperes. Why are we adding this current? It's because both of these currents are moving towards the load resistor, joining in the first point into the load resistor at point A, leaving the load resistor at point B. You must always remember that and always keep it in mind. If these two voltage sources were connected in such a way that current would be moving in different direction, we would have then subtracted. Now, we move to step four in your book. The next step again is to calculate the Norton resistance. When you calculate the Norton resistance, you are therefore short circuiting all the voltage sources which are there in the circuit. If we can redraw that, this is the circuit that we'll be left with. But instead of us leaving the ammeter, we will remove the ammeter and put in an ohmmeter. This being your R1 and this being your R2. One may also choose to rewrite the circuit in this way. There, having your ohmmeter, having your resistor, and having your other resistor there, R1 and R2. It is still fine. It will also assist you to see how the resistors are connected. Now, since these are the only resistors in the circuit, it means those resistors will help us to calculate our noton resistance, which will be given by R1, R2, R1, R2. And this is 6, 12, 6, sorry. This should be 6, 12. And the answer will be 3.75 ohms. That is your Norton resistance. And then now we need to draw our Norton equivalent circuit diagram. Remember, the Norton equivalent circuit diagram is different from your Thevenine equivalent circuit diagram. Here, we're only going to be using your Norton current as well as your Norton resistance all connected now to your load resistor here. And in this case, our load resistor was given as 20 ohms. There. So now we are going to use our current divider rule to calculate the current that flows through the load resistor. Now, what is the current divider rule says? The current divider rule says the opposite resistor of the load resistor would be the Norton resistance. What does that mean? It means that this load resistor will share current with this Norton resistance. However, our primary focus is here. Therefore, it's going to be R Norton divided by R Norton plus R load multiplied by I Norton, which is the supply current in this case. Our R Norton is 3.75, 3.75 plus 20 multiplied by our I Norton, which is 2.367. And we find that the answer here in the current, it will be 0 0.374 amps. Now, as you have read in the book how this theorem is then applied in different circuits, you must then be able to calculate and reach to this conclusion. Now, all of this theorem that we have applied so far, they all build up to create what we call a simultaneous or spontaneous appearance, sometimes in one circuit. What does that mean? It means that you may, in a 
certain scenario, just like what we're doing here, have all of these theorems appearing in one second, where you are doing superpositions theorem, where you are doing catch off and then not Thevenin's theorem, and then now it's Norton's theorem. However, all in all, you are always going to be applying your Ohm's law to do your calculations, which is the baseline law, and that is the law that appears in all of our circuitry calculation. That's it for me today, folks. Let us hope we meet again next time to do another simple and practical example of our industrial electronics and forward.